wakes up, maybe level two, level three. Queen of Pain is going to be her mid, and that leaves Doom as the safe lane farmer. So that that on the side of Rave, I mean, their their tri lane should be fairly obvious. Defensive tri lane for them. Um, well, actually, I mean, the Viper. It could be the Viper, right? We already talked about this. Him as the safe lane carry and Morphling in the mid or vice versa. I think that's the advantage of being able to have both of these heroes is if you're dealing with an aggro try, run the Viper. And Viper can definitely punish aggro tri lanes because you don't want to focus the Viper. At the same time, if you don't focus the Viper, he'll probably get at least a return kill just because that slow is so deadly uh, early on into the game. That could leave the Morphling farming up mid up against a Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain, um, uh, a hero that has been seen a bit in the Southeast Asian and Korean scene. Uh, mainly in the Southeast Asian scene, I would say. But uh, Queen of Pain may be making a comeback here in the next couple of months. Well, it'll all depend on the patch, I suppose. But Queen of Pain has been uh, still keeping a hold on the Southeast Asian region, even when every other region wasn't picking her up at all. The SEA scene was still picking her up every once in a while. Thirty seconds to battle. Do that we're going to be seeing MVP try and protect that Moran in the beginning. Fortunately, we did not miss on him first blood. It looks like uh, MVP ran themselves into the enemy jungle setup and early ward to be able to block out that camp, which um, does eliminate the options when it comes to pulls if you're running a solo offlaner, but again, that's not what they're doing. They're running the two supports the here with the Marana um, in the first couple minutes. We'll see how long they stay here in this top lane. So it's going to be a tri lane versus tri lane engagement. Uh, J.O. will be playing the mid morphling. Viper is going to be in the defensive tri lane for Rave, and that now leaves the Centaur, who's going to be one on one up against a Doom. Not a bad matchup either way. So all in all, Doom, the, the reason like Doom is left a little bit exposed to some harassment from the Centaur, but I would say the Doom shouldn't ever really die because it's fairly obvious how much uh, damage the Centaur can output. And even though you don't have any armor, you still have Scorched Earth to be able to keep up your regen. And as long as, well, you can even get a, a decent creep. Not the health regen creep, which I think you would love to be able to have in this matchup, um, but instead gets the uh, pack leader. <laughs> so this is actually going to be able to give him a rather large damage advantage over the Centaur War Runner. He may not try and use that damage to harass the Centaur because early level of return may prevent him from doing so. Look at this early roam. Ninja Boogie. He picked up a Boots. Level 1. Mass Pinks are coming out, though. Looks like Ninja Boogie has been spotted out. Denied. They're leaving with just a defensive dual lane. Now, Witch Doctor, I, I think w uh, Viper is actually very, very good in these sort of defensive tri lane scenarios or even defensive dual lanes. If you can just leave one good defensive support behind him, normally I would say a hero like Earthshaker is really great. Witch Doctor is not bad when it comes to some of the range supports. Um, defensively, he's a big threat just because Cask, if you dive into the tower, Cask can wreck you pretty badly. Looks like Chrissy, his job should be to start harassing the Doom a bit because there is going to be a Shatter Shaman. Illusion. 
first blood. Ergon, my who's run red with first blood. Uh, wallpaper. Oh, first blood, no! Uh, Doom did end up getting ganked. Looks like they're able to catch him out with the uh, Ninja Boogie rotation. So he is now level 2 thanks to that rotation. Uh, J.O. copping a bit of damage here in the middle lane matchup. He is losing this actually quite heavily due to the fact he can't just straight up morph agility and have a damage advantage <laughs> over the Queen of Pain because he gets harassed too heavily. And that is a um, one of the best things about Queen of Pain in the mid. She is one of the best ranged harassers due to a great attack animation. And of course that poison does, does quite a bit quite a lot as well. Musica is also going to be relying on rune control quite heavily as well, and that's where his team needs to maybe step up and um, make sure that he does get some of that. Wraparound from Ninja Boogie tries to catch out Musica. They were hoping for uh, Musica to be able to blink back. Chrissy's now been caught. Finally, Nuts is able to get the initiation here. Chrissy, one more right click. Nuts will be able to get it. Just barely in range there, thanks to the boots that was picked up by the Ventral Spirit rather early. The cackling laughter will sign the tie now. One to one, four minutes in. The delay seems to be working out uh, decently well for the, uh, in fact, a lot better than I thought. Rior is very low on CS compared to the Marana. I was looking at the Marana CS and going, you know, that's really not that bad, but the number of denies Raji has so far is is very impressive. Up against a Viper who does have a bit of advantage with his Nether Toxin, so that, that simply should not happen, that many denies like that. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Nuts will continue to roam around a bit more as uh, Rave have kept the Shadow Shaman here in this top lane. He's going to be pulling a bit more extensively. Very important for them to pick up their level 6. Dyer's they do have some pushing support on the side of... Uh, on the side of Rave, both Witch Doctor and Shadow Shaman are able to allow you to take towers Dyer's very early on due to the Buddha attack. Restoration as well as the Serpent Wards. So if they can get Centaur, a fast blink dagger, he can start forcing some team fights. He's a bit more active around the map. In fact, I would say a lot more active and forcing team fights and moving around the map than the Doom is. And that could be an advantage that Rave try and push forward, um, backing him up by being able to find those initiations and then using the pushing power of the two supports to be able to allow them to take towers immediately after a pickoff. J.O. jumps forward up against Musica, making sure he returns every tit for tat that Musica is outputting. But he doesn't want to keep himself too low as Musica has got that full bottle. Centaur ultimate goes off. They're going to be able to catch out Raji here. And no leap away before the shackles comes out, meaning the kill will go the way. And Jubei actually overextends his welcome here and is now going to be chased down. Uh, he really couldn't do anything there to be able to help out that Rana. So by sticking around, all he does is add an extra kill to the side of Rave. We're now in some trouble in the middle lane where J.O., they're trying to pop him as much as possible, but J.O. just keeps on morphing more and more into strength, and he's so damn hard to kill. Finally, the last click from Yuska will actually be able to kill him. Surprised that did uh, enough damage, but J.O. had no armor whatsoever, so the right clicks were still doing a lot of damage despite the large health pool for the Morphling. Arn is now going to be picked up by Nuts, and this is such a great start for this Vengeful Spirit, man. The roaming Vengeful Spirit has done some serious work so far in the game, uh, as he's barely on the precipice of being able to turn level 5, has boots, as well as an urn. This early on to the game as a roaming hero is very impressive. Doom's going to be going for a fast Midas. You can see uh, he's going to be picking up right now and sending out to him. No surprise, Dooms that do have safe lane farm like this uh, enjoy picking up Midas just because they get such a gigantic golden experience lead due to the fact uh, with a maxed out de de Devour build, I almost said Dismember, a maxed out Devour build and a hand of Midas just boosts your golden experience very quickly. And no hero can really keep up. When it comes down to safe lane farming, uh, Doom just gains so much extra gold early on. Eventually, heroes like Naga Sign with the Radiance or Enemy Age with the Battle Fury can outstrip him. 
But in those first 20 minutes, man, nobody really out farms a Doom with a Midas. Thousand gold for the Centaur. Looks like he wanted to be able to finish up his full of Tranquil Boots. He's going to find himself an Invis Rune, which he may try and use to initiate on the middle lane. As this would be an excellent opportunity for them to pick off the Queen of Pain. Counter Ward being laid down from the Dire side, just seeing if there's any Counter Wars to make sure Chrissy isn't really wasting his time. Now the opportunity strikes. There it goes. The Central Ultimate, everything else blown. Yusuka will get blown up. Nice little Hex there from Ninja Buki will prevent the Blink away. 2-4 to four now on the board. It's Rave taking her early lead bottom tower with is under their, uh, and shutting down the Queen of Pain too. That was the perfect rune for the Centaur at that point in time. And now he's going to be able to ensure a double damage rune as well. Uh, top lane, Raji is going to be hit by the cast here. It follows him after the leap. You can't disjoint that. But uh, at the same time, he's still going to be able to get himself away. So... I have to say, though, all around, uh, like, MVP, that kill on the Queen of Pain was so important because Queen of Pain is such a snowball-heavy mid-hero. Um, in fact, you really need to be able to pick up your level 11 as soon as possible and yet still have a very active uh, movement around the map in those first 15 minutes. So this is kind of conundrum where you need to have rotations as a Queen of Pain. You need to have successful rotations to be able to pick up your, fa uh, your extra nuke because once you have a level 2 ultimate, it just kind of puts you over the top. You're guaranteed to be able to kill heroes with a Scream of Pain and Sonic Wave if it's any of the supports, right? So she's very much a snowball hero, yet that gank in middle lane from the Centaur just shut her down so heavily. Net worth, no surprise. Doom is leading uh, 1,300 gold ahead of anybody else, and that is the free farming Viper who is placed in second. Looks like he may still be going for a mech, though. Which does make a lot of sense. They don't really have a mech hero. The Marana is going to want to build into uh, some damage-dealing items and try and take over that role going into the late game. While the uh, the Queen of Pain, of course, is never going to go a mech in her life. So the, it's going to be relegated to the Doom. Who certainly has enough free farm to be able to do so. So I don't, I don't, really, I don't really feel bad for him. Centaur is trying to rotate over. They're going to be able to see these supports here, but they're not really close enough to be able to pop. They're actually going to try and beat this out. Bon -bon. Oh, there goes the ultimate. Oh, they actually got the Doom onto Chrissy before anything else could land from the side of Rave. If they'd been able to disable up the Doom, maybe they could have actually won this fight, but instead, looks like they may just waste the Doom and back out. They actually got a full disengage there as Musica is diving in deep here, pops the Scream, but it's not enough to finish off Cri Chrissy as he was healed up by the Witch Doctor. Arrow goes out, but it's nowhere Dyer's close to the side of Rave. Is under attack. Still, that's a, a pretty decent Dyer's engagement. You would have loved to see them fortified. hex up the Doom before his, he was able to throw out his ult. Dyer's bottom tower but uh, has all fallen. in all, the Centaur is still happy Radiant's with that uh, engagement just attack. because they forced a pretty long cooldown ultimate in exchange for getting out. They did lose a tier 1 tower, but the other two solos are free farming in the process. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Mech is finished up by the Viper. And apparently he just loves tanking towers. He wants to be able to buy enough space for this siege creep to stay alive, so... Radiance top Two to four, 11 is minutes in MVP have came, taken a bit of a gold lead experience, uh, slightly in favor of Rave. However, uh, the biggest issue is going to be that the Smurfling has been free farming the middle lane for quite a long time. It doesn't really show in the net worth necessarily because the the Morphling, he's gotten, he's been denied a little bit of CS, but mainly it's the fact that Morphling just isn't going to be participating in any other kills while the Queen of Pain can move around, be a part of kills, get runes, and, uh, and the same can be applied to. Um, some of the other heroes, such as the Viper. Midas. Oh, wow. Midas and Mech already up for uh, Bonwa as he uses that early tower kill they were able to get, plus all the free farm to be able to grab a very decently timed Mech. Like 12 minutes in is really impressive for your second item. But that's just the power of a maxed out Devour, man. It is... Not to be trifled with. And now I think they're just going to five man or at least four man down middle. 
They may leave Ancient Apparition here in the top lane because they do need him to pick up his level 6 as soon as possible. Because if they hit a good uh, Sonic Wave and a good Ice Blast in one team fight, heroes are going to drop. There's no way they can survive against that much magic damage with an Ice Blast over the top. Radiant's so that Ice Blast is, is uh, kind of necessary for MVP's strategy right now. Fortified. The problem is he can't actually get that close to the Creep Wave just because of the fact that the Viper and the cask bouncing around on every creep wave is scaring the ancient apparition enough he doesn't want to go for the dive. Arrow comes across, lands on Rior, and that's going to be a pickoff here. It's MVP Dyer's teleport in. Rior is being kept tower. alive right now by the Witch Doctor ultimate. They're going to throw out an ult of their own with the Queen of Pain. It looks like they're going to be able to get both kills there. Maybe not Rior, he's actually getting some distance here. A couple right clicks, he should still fall. Nuts may fall, but oh, the mech comes in in time. Nice centaur initiation. He's going to be able to finish off that support as they try and get themselves away. Oh, Geo is going to join the rest of his team here at the top lane, but the engagement is kind of already over two for two. Maybe they can still get Bonwa, but they got to be careful. He's so tanky. They're going to go for the Centaur stun. A lot of damage being laid into him. Musica comes in and tries to do what damage he can in return. Two tanky heroes fall. Doom in exchange for the Centaur. Now Musica is being right clicked down by Geo, who has a waveform up in just a second, but the blink away is still up in time. Raji was able to get the Shadow Shaman, but it's going to be forced back now. Geo's turn, who's doing some serious trouble as he gets targeted by both the Magic Missile and the Arrow. Fortunately, between Strength Morph and Witch Doctor Voodoo Restoration, that's uh, an amazing amount of heal. Ice Blast lands, but there's nobody ready to follow up on that. They're just going to back themselves up. Six to seven, and MVP walk away from that team fight. Not uh, too worse for wear. Musica, I'm interested to see what build he is going to be going here. All right, so see that? See that initiation from the Centaur? You throw an Ice Blast. Or, sorry, the Ice Blast is on MVP's team. Still, I guess maybe the Shadow Shaman follow-up. I'm not really sure. They don't really have that, that good of extra follow-up, I guess. Attack. Tier 1 Tower is going to fall in the top lane at VP. Losing more ground up against Rave as they start aggressively pushing in. Chrissy waiting for his opportunity to strike. I, I keep feeling like this centaur is setting up for kills that he can't quite get. Oh, well, Ancient Apparition is going to be a rather easy one, though. Additional heroes coming down. Into the bottom lane, Riar is going to try and push in the bottom tier 1 tower while uh, Chrissy baits him out, essentially. If things get real bad, he'll just pop his ultimate, but if it's only one or two heroes, he'll jump in, hit the centaur stomp, and turn that fight around rather easily. See whether or not Bonwa goes for a blink dagger? He does. Dyer's he middle picks tower it up. Is under attack. And that is going to be Radiant's the attempt at countering out the attack. Morphling. Now, Morphling doesn't have uh, the greatest farm right now. J.O. has actually still faltered in farm. I don't know if that maybe that top rotation where he rotated in the top lane but didn't really add too much. I think he was part of one assist. Moonlight Shadow, they're going to start going on Musica. This could be a great start to the team fight, but a two man Ice Blast is going to lead the way as well. Swap in. Witch Doctor Ultimate doing so much work. It's got full ultimate. It even finishes off Jubei on the side as they chase away the Marana. Now Bonwa is going to be in some trouble as he runs right headlong into Chrissy, who stuns him up with Paladin going off and the double edge. They'll be able to get that kill. Little do they know, Raji actually leapt himself into the trees here and is currently stuck. And Radiant's they could have a complete team wipe, but attack. instead they're just going to content themselves with a four-man wipe. Chrissy, he's actually looking for him. Feels like something is up. But because he doesn't see anybody, they're just going to back themselves up, though. A good start to the uh, Centaur's Blink Dagger, though. Dyer's top tower Already finding is under those attack. openings. Tier 1 tower, that was a mistake there from the Centaur. Between his right click and his return, he actually just put the tower into night range. So that's immediately going to be denied. I think he was just trying to force, force attention into the middle lane while the rest of his team did Roshan. Um, but putting a tower into night range isn't quite the way to do it. Jubang, ah, he's got the heads up. He knows what's going on. He's locked into the Roche pit. He's going to be able to land on three. 
Uh, but with the wards already being committed inside the pit, Wraith can just stick it out, grab an Aegis, Riar cops an arrow to the face, but he's going to be fine. And the rest of MVP Hot 6 are not going to fight anymore. They're just going to try and... Uh, I don't know, what do they do against this? Do they let the Morphling continue to free farm, or do they 5-man try and force a fight into an Aegis? It's a tough call, but I would say I think they have to continue to keep fighting around this Queen of Pain. I still don't get what this Queen of Pain is building. Uh, Orchid is like the one of the items for a Queen of Pain, but apparently uh, Musica feels like it's not really the item for him. As I'm actually going to do this, I'm just trying to think, like, is he he's going Dagon? He's going, he's going Necrobook. Okay. Necrobook, Queen of Pain. Um... <laughs> I mean, they do need some additional pushing power. I, I will totally agree with that, but it seems kind of presumptive for you to go for an Necronomicon and go for pushing power when you aren't even straight up winning team fights yet. Still, though, at least Queen of Pain can be made into attack. a pretty damn good split pusher at that point in time. And Necronomicon will be extremely helpful in burning out the Morphling's mana. Looks like I they've caught music on the middle lane. Another Centaur Initiation stomp into a large amount of magic damage, and now the Blast is going to be able to land on two in the bottom lane, where Jo has now just been doomed up, and with the Ancient Apparition ultimate going off as well, he is going to tick himself up. He can do nothing about this. Viper is going to fall. Actually, he didn't die. Witch Doctor was able to get there in time. Doom is not going to be able to kill him. Now the Counter Initiation in from Rape. Going to be able to catch out two of MVP with a beautiful Centaur Stomp. Gets that one. And now Nuts, who's trapped inside the jungle, is also going to fall. So well done, MVP. Losing four there as Rape only lost the Ancient Apparition, who did eventually fall. Due to uh, running headlong into the eventual spirit. Wow, top lane, actually. Chrissy was still able to get an additional kill into the Marana this time around. As this Chrissy is just going ham all over the place. They're going to claim a tier 2 in the bottom lane on top of that. Radiance bottom tower Critical mistake fallen. there from J.O. though, I have to say. Running running in like that and dying to the Vengeful Spirit in what should have been a, a flawless victory there for Rave. Big mistake. Casket says the Witch Doctor. He's farming up his Aghanims. He's halfway there, actually. Point booster plus uh, one of his big stat items are ready for pickup. Ninja Boogie's probably going to grab himself a Blink Dagger, I would presume, for his Shatter Shaman. It's always nice to be able to have that initiation item and not just be relying solely on the Centaur for your source of uh, disable immediate disable on one hero. Bonwa. He's, uh, he picked up his Blink Tacker a few minutes ago, but it seems like his farm has stalled out a bit since then just due to the uh, extra deaths that he's been receiving. It goes to show how amazing the Hand of Midas Devour build is for Doom when it comes to economy-wise. He is still second at net worth, sitting at 8,600, despite the fact he has four deaths to his name, while the Viper only has one. Looks like they're going to try and find initiation here. Nuts may try and go for a swap into an arrow or something of the like. And if they are successful in being able to land that arrow, an ice blast could easily get them the kill. But it looks like MVP are not going to try and force the fight. Queen of Pain has been farming up for quite some time. And it makes sense. Normally, Queen of Pains are a lot more aggressive. But with this skill build that, uh, or item build, that Musica chose to go for with the Necronomicon, you need to be able to wait until your Necronomicon is maxed out before you force any fights. Smoke rotation, Ninja Boogie, the smoke has popped. Oh, wow, the timing on that one. Ninja Boogie even pursues there with the Blink Dagger, both of them but neither the one of them finds the right spot. In return, they're going to try and maybe go on the middle lane for the side of MVP. Initiation, jump in, Doom immediately onto the Viper. Now they have left up the top of the Centaur. An ult gives them the time to be able to jump away between the Witch Doctor ultimate as well as the Waveform. They're able to take down the Centaur.
or not the Centaur, the Doom, who jumped in so aggressively to ulti up the Viper. Now the Viper is full health, the Huda Restoration doing an excellent job countering the damage over time. The Mirana is going to lose his life Radiant's as the blink in from Chrissy is able to catch him out. No leap before the Centaur stun lands. And that means yet another tier two, and it can't be helped by feeling like Rave uh, will probably be able to close, th close this game out pretty soon. 7 to 18, 22 and a half minutes in. Radiant's and they've got almost a 10,000 gold lead over a 10,000 experience lead. Lincolns is up for J.O. Centaur initiation is going to be able to find Nuts and finish him off real quickly. The rest of the team comes in. Ice Blast on two, but I don't think they have enough damage to be able to do much more. The Serpent Wards are going to force away Radiant any pursuits. In fact, they're going to stick around inside Radiant's this base and force down a tier three. Attack. Musica doesn't have his ultimate. No Necro Book is up for him either. And they Radiant's have no way to be able to stop this incoming fallen. push. Arrow comes out, lands on Rior. That's a start. But is it going to be enough? Two man stomp, two man wait for him, and both the heroes will fall. Queen of Pain and Murata group up a bit too much. Chrissy finds the initiation. Big blunders here from MVP Dyer's Hot Six. As uh, they look so good in two of the previous games that I saw them, but unfortunately, this game uh, seems like middle barracks are under they just attack. keep on getting Dyer's crushed by the centaurs. Say, Chrissy attack. certainly had a lot of good initiations here, but I don't think he should necessarily be catching out, especially the Murata every single time he jumps in that hero is just uh, has that instant leap that can go off in response to a jump like that from the centaur you may still get hit by the stun but at least your leap keeps on going you get some distance J.O. is now going to start farming up his big damage dealing item because uh, he already has Lincolns plus another 1800 gold Aghanims has been finished up by the Viper who also has an additional cloak which is really not something you see too often. Maybe a BKB for the Viper just because of uh, hard disables. But other than that, I would say Viper very rarely gets uh, a cloak Dyer's or a hooded defiance. Tower is under attack. But that's just how much magic fortified. damage is coming out from MVP. The only real physical damage that they have right now, I, I wouldn't even include Marana as a right clicker. I think it's just Dyer's the Doom's right clicks. Um, and he's not that much farther ahead of the Marana. It's just the advantage he has, which is the critical strike. Other than that, it's pretty much entirely magic damage. Eventually, there will be a lot more magic damage as the Doom, attack. as well as the uh, the Doom starts building into some right-click damage, but it seems like that's going to be quite a while from now, especially with Cass now picking up his Aghanim Scepter. We've seen the way these uh, Witch Doctor Ultimates have gone on without interruption. And he's not going to, I mean, before it was devastating. Now with the Aghanims upgrade, plus level 2, which gives you that bounce, uh, we need to have the Aghanims. Or, yeah, should give you a bounce. Yeah, bounce is 4. So it, it's just like, they can't afford to let that ultimate go on for longer than a second. Vengeful Spirit. Uh, he needs level 2 swap in order to make sure he can do it instantly. That's the biggest problem is the Vengeful Spirit has to actually run himself in in order to get in range of the swap to stop that ultimate from going off. Five man in. Rave. They already took the mid racks. It looks like they're going to go for an early set of second racks. Not even stopping to do Roshan or something like that. Arrow Radiant's does land on J.O., but he's protected by the Serpent Wards and the rest of his team Radiant's right now. Bottom barracks are under attack. His pipe keeps him alive. Ice Blast jumping in now. And he needs to go. Moonlight Shadow plus the open lands on two. Nice initiation, but a better Centaur stop. <laughs> he's going to be able to eliminate both the uh, Marana as well as the Doom. Ancient Apparition as well as the Vengeful Spirit. Going to fall. And, well, Musica jumps in deep in order to try and finish off the Viper, which he does successfully do so. But it was a deny from J.O. that got that last hit. And uh, GG is called from MVP. And uh, Rave, now all excited as they are going to be moving on. So well done by Dyer Rave. Uh, I have to say MVP. I was actually considering them. The, uh, I thought they were going to have the upper hand here going on into this finals. But uh, Rave doing an excellent job from the get-go, shutting him down. Unfortunately, MVP Hot 6 just didn't have... This, it looked like they didn't have the same fire that they did have in their previous games up against both Invasion Esports as well as as uh, tight. 
So now that does bring an end to the I-League broadcast. We're going to be starting out. This was the Southeast Asian and Korean qualifier, uh, and that is it. Rave now going to be going to China I-League. We'll continue, though, with the Chinese qualifier that is going to be happening this weekend that starts tomorrow at 13 CEST and continues all week long into next weekend. Actually ends on Saturday. But for now, we're going to be taking a bit of a break, two hours, and then we are going to be jumping into two different streams, both Join Dota Red and Join Dota Blue. We'll be going live. The MSI Beta Global European Qualifier begins. Uh, we have the upper bracket semifinals. The winter bracket semifinals are going to be happening uh, today. Toby Wan's going to be casting that. I will be on Join Dota Blue with MYM versus Hee Hee in the Join Dota League at 18 CEST. And then, uh, well, Toby will continue with the upper bracket semi-final I will be jumping from that joint league match into the we play Atlantic qualifier number one final so that's the uh, that's the plan for the rest of the broadcast two hour break though I will talk to Toby I don't think we're gonna be doing anything during the break uh, because we have some work to do setting up some of the other studios for this so uh, I will talk to you guys later and uh, well I guess we'll see you in two hours time